Hello everyone, you are watching ITV Gold and I'm your host Aditi Lamba. Welcome to the show. Today I have an honor and privilege of having someone very incredible with an organization that's doing even more incredible work. Cry America, Child Rights and You. A beautiful foundation that is really putting in a lot of work for the underprivileged children of India. Bringing on the show, I have with me Parul. There is an event coming up in New York City with Cry, and today we'll be talking to her a lot about Cry and the event coming up. Parul, thank you so much for being with us on ITV Gold. Thank you, Aditi. I am so happy to be here and you know to just spread the message about child rights through your channel. So thank you for having me. Of course, mm -hmm. you know, just going into this interview and giving our audience a little bit more insight into what Cry America has been doing. You know, this foundation has been there for so long. I personally have known so much about it. And there is a lot of incredible work that's been done. Give us a little insight into, you know, what has Cry America been doing? All the chapters you have had in the U.S. As well as if you could give us some facts or insights into the change you've mm -hmm. seen over the years in Cry, it would be great. Okay, super. So um, Cry America, for those who are not familiar, it stands for Child Rights in You. And it focuses on a rights approach to help underprivileged children. You know, there was a time where people used to uh, focus on the relief approach, yeah. but we moved from relief into rights because relief was more about addressing an issue that had occurred, whereas rights looks at the underlying symptoms. So, for example, when you look at relief, you're looking at yeah. the malnourished and you're looking at, let's say, you know, people not getting enough education and so on. But when you look at rights, right. you look at issues like gender and caste and you know the you get basically into the roots of the issue and yeah. then you address them like you would you know if you have a situation of child marriage and child labor it's not just stopping that marriage that's taking place it's about making the entire institution understand why it's a problem right. so you would talk to their parents you would talk to the community and address it as a whole so that there isn't another child marriage in that community there isn't another child labor in the community right. so you're not helping one child feel better mm -hmm. you're allowing all the children born in a certain community to have access to their rights and these rights by the way for those who are not familiar yeah. it's right to survival development protection and participation and this has been established uh, you know in the Indian Constitution and the United Nations um, um, Charter as well for let children. Me, let me ask you a question so when Cry America was founded what mm -hmm. were some of the biggest issues they found um, in Indian children the underprivileged children that we we're talking about what exactly sort of motivated this kind of an approach to sort of create start creating these self-sustainable communities, encouraging more children. Give me a little brief into what was sort of the thought process back then and what is the thought process now? Okay, so when Cry America was founded, which is about 14 years ago, we realized that there were a lot of children in India who needed our help. Now, a lot of these children were already a part of Cry in India, which has been around for 40 years now. Wow. So Cry America over here in the US was founded as a separate entity. And we basically wanted to help underprivileged children in India, some in the U.S. as well. Right. And, you know, we wanted to find a medium that would allow us to channel our funds back, our efforts back to children in need. You know, often we hear about children from Africa, from yeah. other countries mm -hmm. who are underprivileged. But we came to realize that there wasn't enough awareness about the miseries of Indian children. So Cry America, when it came about, we identified projects that we wanted to support in India for these children and we said, let's make it an interactive way where we get the community to participate and be involved in bringing about this change. And how we were able to do that, we got a lot of volunteers on board. We, you know, we went around and did awareness events where the community, like you know, people in the New York, New Jersey area, they became right. aware of, mm -hmm. of the plight of these children. And basically it started with just donations. And then we went into more fun stuff where we said, let's do fundraising events yeah. where people can have a good time also, but we are able to raise funds and send them back. And as of today, we have grown immensely. We started out with just a handful of volunteers and just a few chapters. Today we have 24 chapters in the U.S. In the U.S., just in the U.S. Just in the U.S., 24 chapters, and they're entirely volunteer run. And, and Parul, could you give me a brief breakdown into how many children have been helped by CRY? What has the work been in India, you know, like? Also, especially, where are these areas that you find a lot of these disparities in? Where are all these children being taken care of? Okay, 
So in terms of Cry America's impact alone, and this yes. is not, I'm not talking about Cry India. Yes. because only the, Cry America, just all the work that's been done from here. All the work that's been done. And its impact in from, India. Exactly. So all the work that we have done over the course of the time that we have been around in the U.S. Yes. In total, we have impacted 718,000 children. Wow. Okay. We have supported 73 projects in India. We also support some projects in the U.S. Currently, we support the Boys and Girls Club and Child Rights Inc. in the U.S. Oh, wow. um, but, uh, you know, majority of the work is being done in, in India at this point. So when you look at the number 718,000, sounds amazing. Yeah. And, you know, we're so glad that we were able to bring about the change. But will you believe it if I tell you there are still 33 million child laborers in India? Yeah, India's population is so massive. I think that's exactly. the biggest issue for a lot of nonprofits, I, I believe, because... It's just not enough help and there are so many people that need help. Exactly. So we are really hoping that, you know, through our events, through our volunteers, we mm -hmm. can allow people to know that here we are, we are your medium for change. You know, you can work with us, volunteer with us, support us, attend our events and, you know, just be a part of this cry family that we have and help us help these millions of other children. Wow. You know, when we're talking about all of the, you know, massive impact Cry America has had on a lot of underserved children, a lot of this takes us back into the fact that a huge part of it working is this huge body of volunteers and mm -hmm. a huge body of donors that are supporting the causes, that are giving, you know, their own resources to help all these children. You know, when we're looking at all of this, an event that we're coming up with next week, has something to do with that as well and it's very important for you to start you know creating more of a networking community when you came up with the idea of your upcoming event and you thought that i'm going to bring panelists and i'm going to provide a networking event for people to just learn about cry what is your intention with it and what perhaps do you think could happen if you were to just increase more activity in the new york chapter for cry america Okay, so let me answer that in, okay. in, in, in a few parts. Perfect. The event that we have coming up, we call it Cry Connect. Why do we call it Cry Connect? Because this is our way of connecting with the community that wants to help. We are strong believers that we are surrounded by great people around us who are a lot more privileged than the children that we are helping. And we believe that they're good human beings who want to help, but they just don't know how to help. They right. don't know how to make a difference. So we want to connect them with us as an organization that here we are, you can work with us, you can support us and you know, bring about great change. Now, you know, anytime you go about doing something like this, you need, you need people who root for your cause. Yeah. So we've got these four wonderful panelists, they're great people. They understand the plight of these children because they have a South Asian background and whenever they go back to India, they've seen these children yeah. suffering. So they said, you know what, we will come and help you. We are happy to talk about our journey if it helps attract a crowd and helps people relate to it, especially, yeah. you know, um, people, as I said, of the in Indian background, South Asian community. And while we do that, if you're able to build a good network who can help you in the future and also help you raise some funds, we will feel great about it. So there are four panelists who we have for this event. Each has their own story. Yeah. It's, it's quite a diverse group. We've got an entrepreneur, we've got an immigration attorney, we've got you know, an award winner for women in technology. We have a, you know, a top level executive from MSCI. So, so you know, when you just hear these things, it's right. like you see what all the Indian community here has to offer, even in terms of caliber. You know, they're great, intelligent people, have had their share of experiences, right. but they really understand the importance of giving back to the community. And they have allowed us to set up this event as a means for them to give back to the community and also for others to come and understand that, you know, here's a family that exists and you can give back in yeah. cash and kind in whatever way. You know, I have to ask you as a young mm -hmm. South Asian American mom, I know you must have a personal connection with this subject. I'm pretty sure a lot of moms would. But if you were to say something to the Indian moms and dads, South Asian moms and dads of the US, just from a mother's point of view on nonprofit work, especially for children, children of Cry America, what would you like to say them as a mom? Oh, you've touched a topic so close <laughs> to my heart. So, so my child was born three years ago and I was already involved with Cry at that point. 
And um, you know, once he was born, everybody told me, you're a mom now, you have your hands full. Why don't you just take care of your child, hmm. you know? And I went back and told him, I said, you have to understand, this child is a blessing from all the children who gave me blessings for the work that I was doing for them. And having my own child today makes me want to give back even more. You know, every single day when I'm able to dress him in cute clothes, give him the best of food to eat, now yeah. he goes to school, give him, a, give him a good education, I feel so privileged. And I, you know, I just feel that there are so many children there who don't have this. And it doesn't take a lot to help those children and help those mothers. Yeah. So today being a mother, understanding the challenges of motherhood, having a child, seeing him grow and seeing the little joys I just feel as mothers, we should go above and beyond to help other mothers and children. Mm. You know, whether you do that over here or you do it in India, just, just as another woman, you should go out there and help other people. And also, just talking on women, a lot of these children end up actually bringing some help to the moms as well. Women empowerment is also a huge part of Cry America. Now, what are your comments on that? So, you know, what, what you just mentioned about the children bringing help to moms, right? There are children in these projects who are trying to help their moms, and then their children, their volunteers' children. So let me, so let me address the, the happier bit, mm -hmm. where we are volunteers and we have little children, and it's really nice to see them volunteering at our events. You know, at a very early age, I think, the parents have made them realize that mm -hmm. you know you need to be grateful for what you have. Right. So so it plays a core part in their upbringing where they stay humble, where they're thankful for everything. Like it, it's not just their right. Hey, I want to go buy something new, or or hey, mom, buy me this. It's like they just feel blessed that I got a gift today, mm -hmm. because they understand that there are all these children who are in India at this point right. who don't have access to all this. Mm -hmm. So now getting back to the children in India who are yeah. part of these communities who are helping their mothers. Exactly. So I once visited a project and uh, this was in one of the slums of Delhi and um, you know the, the project partner that we had she said let's go for a walk let's see which all children went to school today and which and ones where did. where in Delhi were you? So there's this area called Badla it's an industrial mm -hmm. area near Rohini so it's on the outskirts of Delhi and uh, I went to visit the project. I, I walked into the slum and I see that there's this little five-day-old child just mm -hmm. wrapped up in a dupatta and just laying by his mother. And then there's another six-year-old girl and she's just there eating rice out of a small little bowl. So the project partner asked her, why didn't you come to school? She said, oh, you know, I had this little baby and I have to take care of the child. The, the six-year-old the six-year-old child... six girl was taking care of a newborn baby because the mother had to start going back to work. Wow. So it's a few days old baby being taken care of a six-year-old child. That is the plight that we deal with. So I really believe, you know, when people ask me, what does cry really do? Yeah. You know, I, I, I like the literature. I, I, I like all the text that we have right. on our website. But but to me, what it really does, it provides hope. It provides hope to these children who I'm talking about. It provides hope to this little girl that I will not have to drop out of my school just because I had a younger sibling. Mm -hmm. It provides hope to the little toddler who knows there will be a next meal and he will not have to go to sleep hungry. You know, it provides hope to teenage girls who, you, who are going to school but then decided to drop out because there weren't enough toilets. It was a, it was an issue of hygiene. You know, it provides hope to the mother, as I mentioned to you, yeah. that my child will be born healthy because I got all the prenatal care and I went through a good delivery procedure and the child will be born in a safe environment. You know, like when I talk about safety, I've heard of episodes where in the hospital itself or while the child was being delivered itself, the child was just kidnapped, taken away and sold. Imagine as a mother, tomorrow you have a baby and you know, you give birth and you never get to see your child again. How miserable is that? Mm. And these are things that we have heard of, we've met the parents go through. So just being able to provide that safe and secure environment, it, you know, you just, you just feel really grateful. Yeah. Okay, so you have to hear this. Every eight minutes a child goes missing in India. Every eight minutes? Every eight minutes a child goes missing in India. Wow. Because they don't have a secure environment to live in.
So these are underprivileged children getting missing every eight minutes. A basically. large population of underprivileged. You also hear about other children who go, well. who go missing. You know, like mm -hmm. there are kidnappings and so on that happen. But just think about the pain that those parents go through after having given birth, after having tried to feed them with their limited means. Yeah. Next thing, finding out that you don't know where your child is and then not knowing where to knock doors. Yeah. It's like, who do you go to for help? So, you know, we have had situations where they've come back to the project partners and we've been able to recover the children. So obviously I have to ask you this question, where should we find more information for Cry America? And also for this event, everyone that is in Tri-State, you're all welcome to attend. New York City is not far from a lot of states. Where can they find more information for the event, particularly Parul? And perhaps where can we, they get the tickets? So we have a Facebook page. It's called Cry America New York Action Center. We also have a portal where you can go and purchase the tickets. That's events.cryamerica.com backslash networking event. Uh, we can put this up on the screen to make it easier. Of course. And also our partners, Homies, it's on their app as well. Thank you so much, Farrell. Thank you. Well, as you heard, the website, we will be displaying it right now and the events page to get your tickets. If you are in the area or if you're around, come on June 4th and come and see us at the Cry event. I'm Diti Lamba signing off.